Now for this problem, yeah, anyone has come up with the solution? Why? So this is actually, I think, tricky. tricky. But whenever you see something like this, divide, then maybe you can guess there is a kind of a rule of quotient thing going on. We can group things together so that, so all together they are to the power n strengths, right? We, if we can group things together such that each group has two of them, and then one of them has even number, the other one has odd then, then mm, this will give us the solution. Is that okay? So, so one way of think, thinking about this problem is like this. So let's say you have an n digits binary strain. We forget the first part. We focus on the last part. Okay. So for the same first part, you can make it, you can attach it a zero to form. So let's say that n minus one digits here. You you have for a particular n minus one digit here, you can you can you can what? You can add a zero at the end to make a MP string, or you can add a one here to make an MP string, right? Does it make sense? Okay, and then what do we know? One of them has even number of zeros, and the other has odd number of zeros. It must be this one. Maybe this is having even number of zeros. Then this one will have odd number of zeros. Or maybe this has odd number of zeros, and the other one will have even number of zeros. Is that okay? So in that sense, Based on the first, exactly the first n minus one digit, we are grouping things together. Each group has two strengths. Okay? And there are two to the power, so there are two to the power n minus one groups. This is what we can do. Each group has two strengths. And exactly one of them has odd number of zeros, and then the other one has even number of zeros. Is that okay? Okay, because each group has exactly one, one string with even number of zeros, and this is the answer, 2 to the power n minus 1. Okay? Okay, good. Tricky, very tricky. How do we get this solution? Okay. To get the solution, the best way is you try n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, n is equal to 4. You find the pattern, and then you guess. Okay, after you guess it, this is like 2 to the power n minus 1. And then you try to come up with a way to convince yourself why this is true, to prove that it is true. Okay. Now, let's do a related problem. The next problem turns out to be even harder. Okay. This is related. So this time, let's look at not binary string. This time, let's look at four string. Quaternary string, four. So in a quaternary string, each digit can be zero, one, two, or three. Is it okay? Is that okay? And we are asking the same question. How many of them contain even number of zeros? Now, suppose that you have tried small n, and then somehow you, you get a conjecture. The formula looks like this. The formula actually looks like this. Now, I, I, I'm asking you for an uh, explanation why this is correct. Okay, let's check, let's check, let's check. Let's say this is just one digit. Okay, one digit. So let's say number of digits. Number of strings. With even zeros. So let's try to check whether this is correct. So first of all, if there's, forget the formula. We check the formula later. If there's just one digit, how many strings has even number of zeros? One digit. So the, there are only four strings, either zero or one or two or three. 
And then we know that there are three of them, right? Two digits. Now, two digits tends out to be harder now. Okay, so two digits. What, what kind of strengths do you have? There are 16 possible cases, right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and then 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and then 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, and then 3, 3. And then we want to find out how many of them has even number of zeros. So let's mark it down. <coughs> So this has even number of zeros, even number of zeros, even number of zeros, okay. That's a large group. Is it? Is it? So there are going to be 10 of them. For three, too hard. We will, we will try that as an example to, to prove this formula. But let's see the formula, whether it is correct. So when n is equal to one, this is two plus what? 4 minus 2 divided by 2. So 2 plus 1. Is that okay? 2 plus 2 divided by 2 is 2 plus 1. So it is 3. So we get 3 here. When n is equal to 2, then this will be. So when n is equal to 2, what will happen? And this will be 4 plus 16 minus 4 divided by 2. So this is 12 divided by 2. 6 here. 6 plus 4 is 10. So it works for these two cases. Okay. It doesn't mean that it is correct, but we need to find a reason. So, so how do we solve this? Okay. You can think of different ways. Okay. But one of them, this is this is this is a question from Professor Liu's textbook. Okay. And let's see how he's solving this. Okay. He tries to Divide the four restraints into two different groups. So, so the first group is it only contains two, three. It doesn't contain zero, one. And then the other one is it is not only two, three. So not only two, three, it means that it must have some zero, or it must have some one, or both, okay? It is not just two, three, then it must have something else, okay? Now, for each case, let's count the number of strengths with even number of zeros. Okay, so for this group, so for this group, only two and three, because you don't have any zeros. So any strings that consists of just two and three will automatically have even number of zeros, right? How many strings are there that has just two and three? They're n positions, right? Each position, you choose a two or three, two or three, two or three, two or three. So there are two to the power n. So there are two to the power n. So this two to the power n corresponds to this two to the power n. Is that okay? Now how many strings does not have just two or three, so this must be four to the power n minus two to the power n. But this is not the answer. We hope to show that out of these four to the power n minus two to the power n strengths, half of them will have even number of zeros. Okay. Okay. And the idea is the same as before. We use uh, this rule of quotient. We use grouping. We try to group things together. Okay. So if you can come up with a grouping method, then it is good. So what can be a typical string like this? Not just two and three, but you, you may have one and, and zero. So maybe a string looks like this, three, one, zero, okay? Or maybe a string, it looks like two, one, three. Is it okay? Or maybe a string that's, let, let's say n is equal to three. Or maybe a string that looks like uh, three, three, one. Is that okay? So, or maybe a string that looks like uh, zero, one, zero. Okay? So if it, all these are not are strings that don't just contain two or three. It contains some zero and some ones. Or some ones. Okay? 
Now, we, want, we are now going to form groups. So the grouping here is, is like this. For each string, we are going to pair up with another string. So how do we pair up? We scan from left to right. We look at the first position, which is a zero or one. We switch it. From left to right, we look at the first position, which is a zero or one. We switch it. So but this is zero, we switch it to one. So if you look at zero, if it is zero, you switch it to one. If it is one, you switch it to zero. Is that okay? So zero, one, zero will be paired up with one, one, zero. Is that okay? And on the other hand, if you look at one, one, zero, if you scan from left to right, this is the first position with one or zero, right? You switch it to the other side. Is that okay? So we are pairing these two strings up. And for this case, three, one, zero, we keep the three, it doesn't do the switch change. But this is the first position, which is not, which is a zero or one. And then we switch it to the other side. This is not the first position, we keep it. Is that okay? So these two strings will form a group. If you have this string, you know that this is the other partner in the, in the same group. This string, you have another partner. Is that okay? For this string, for this string, two, one, three, two, you keep it, one, you switch it to zero, three, you keep it. Is that okay? And finally, this three, three, well, how do we how do we do it? So three is keeping, three is keeping, one is switch it to zero. The first occurrence of one or zero, you switch it. All the other, you keep it. If you understand what I'm talking about, could you please raise your hand? Okay. So one one more example. Just so let's say, hmm, how about two zero zero? What should it correspond to? The other one. Okay, very good. It's two one zero. Is that okay? How about two one zero? Two zero zero. Is that okay? So you see that okay, these two are talking about the same thing. Okay. So, so interestingly, there are two four to the power n minus two to the power n strings in this class. But for all these strings, we can pair them up into groups of size two. Why I'm pairing them up? Them up? Because what we know is one of them must have odd number of zeros and the other one must have even number of zeros. Is that okay? Because one of, because we, we switch, okay, we look, we scan from left to right. We see a zero, we switch it to one. The number of zeros decreases by one. Or if we see a one, we switch it to zero. The number of zeros increases by one, right? So the two strings here, they never have the same parity in terms of zero. One has to be odd, the other has to be even. Does that make sense? This is zero, one, zero. It has even at the beginning, right? And now we scan it. This is the, the zero here. We change it to one. Suddenly it becomes odd overall. Is that okay? For this one, at the beginning it is even. Uh, sorry, it is odd. There is just one single zero. And then by, by doing this, operation, we switch it, so we immediately increase the number of zeros by one. So from odd, it becomes even. So this is even to odd, this is odd to even, this is even to odd, this is even to odd. Is it okay? So so here, what do we, what do, what do we have? So if we draw, these are all the possible strengths, n, n digits quaternary strengths. There are four to the power n of them, then we can isolate them into two groups. One of them has two to the power n of them. They represent the two threes only case. And then the other part, you have four to the power n minus two to the power n of them. Is that okay? And then for, for things here, each of them, you can, you can divide it into two strings. Form groups, two strings. So they are going to be 4 to the power n minus 2 to the power n over 2 groups. Because each group has exactly two strengths. Is that okay? And then one of them is odd, one of them is even. 
Okay, in terms of number of zeros. Not, not the overall result. One of them has odd number of zeros, the other has even number of zeros. So what do we know? So for this remaining group, there are exactly half of the strengths with even number of zeros. Well, that's why we got the answer like that. Is that okay? Check your understanding. Check your understanding. How about five of these? What should we do? Five very strength, what should we do? Five very strength? The answer is I just change this a little bit. I hope that my understanding is correct. It will be three to the power n, five to the power n, three to the power n. This is what I guess. Okay? Because five very strength it is zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. You can isolate it into two groups, two, three, four only. And then not two, three, four only. Two, three, four only, three to the power n. The other part, exactly half of them. Okay, so this is this is very, very tricky, right? Now, now remember this question. So later we will look at this question again. Okay. This time we are using combinatorics to solve it. Combinatorics has a lot of reasoning to go to go into. So you need to be very clever to solve it. So I'm not clever. I need to read the textbook to, to solve it. Okay. But then later we can we will have have we will introduce generating function techniques. Okay. If this problem is put into a generating function type of question, then it will be suddenly becomes easy. We are just applying rules. Rule number one, blah blah blah, rule number two, blah blah blah. Okay. All kinds of problems like this, you can use rules to solve it and then you, you just need to be a machine. So there is a mechanical way that you can find out a formula like, like this, to solve like this. So both of them are good. Okay, this one you can explain to your friend why this is correct. So this adds up to some, to some uh, knowledge inside. The mechanical way, it gives you a solution very quickly, but you don't know why it is correct. You just believe that. Okay, you, you know you should know why because it's like you have proved that if a problem looks like this form, you can solve using this method. But 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 then 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 once you are applying the method, then you, you forget about why 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 this is correct at the beginning. It, it's just like what? Just like so I be, so everyone here should still remember how to solve quadratic equation, right? So I have an equation like uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. I want to find out the roots. What, what are the possible values of x that makes the whole thing zero? Then you can apply the, the, the formula like x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac and then this number divided by 2a, right? So there's a formula like this. But then this does not explain why, why it is correct. But on the other hand, you can also solve this problem by by using fundamental methods, and then you derive the same thing, okay? But then this gives you extra knowledge explanation to this. So, so, so today, we don't have any machines, we don't have any rules to help us to solve it. But later, when we introduce generating function, then we will have mechanical way. So both of them are good. One gives you knowledge, one gives you speed. You, you, you can quickly calculate the answer. You don't, you don't need to understand, oh, how should I group things together? How sh should I worry about that? We are overcoming things here or there. Then, then this, is, this is the difference, okay? But remember this question, so we will see this again.